Howdy everybody in YouTube land. What we have in front of us today is a Macintosh portable board. The person who sent this in for repair also sent the PowerBook 100 board in for parts as well as a console 5 capacitor kit for the Macintosh portable backlit model. So we have all of that. Now, he did said his friend recapped this thing already and then plugged some things in and I don't know what happened but uh yeah I can tell right now that whoever recapped this thing did a very not so good job this one is just kind of hanging on by a thread it's not even on anymore it's basically done uh and left all the original through hole caps in here which also leak I mean, I can't be too judgmental because the person who worked on this, this could have been their first time, you know, doing this kind of thing. It's hard to say, but in the grand scheme of things, it's it's awful. So, in order before I can even troubleshoot this board to see what's going on with it, I got to strip everything down and redo it. Or all the caps, I should say. Uh, he used this UV curable solder mask stuff here and... I don't really have any problems with it, but for me, I get nitpicky because that hides a lot of damage and a lot of things that you can't really see, like open vias and stuff like that. So I'm going to have to pull this connector off so I can see up underneath it. And again, I got to pull these caps off because I want to clean this board and I need to check everything because these portables are stupid picky with the boards that they use. Um, in, in, you know, the way this circuit's designed, but and we got some issues going on over here. I'm inclined to leave that for now. I might pull that stuff back off and double check it later, but for now I'm inclined to just leave that. But yeah, all this has got to come off. There's a bodge wire from where something was ripped. It's just, it's a mess. It is a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess. So, all right, without further ado... I gotta get this board off but um yeah this one was sent along for parts to be able to pull the chips off to fix this board if necessary like if the pmgr is damaged i got another one i can steal because this one is also not in great of shape um someone had a little fun with the fuse over here so yeah that's not good so this board is definitely a parts board and even if it wasn't i can't test it anyway because i do not own any PowerBook 100s. I've done some repairs for other people, but I don't own the machine myself. So I can't do anything with that bare board. So there we go. Let's get this thing stripped down and figure out what mess we have going on here. And we'll just start tackling it one task at a time. All right, step one to this madness was to start clearing out this corner, which I have begun to do and I already had a break right here, which I ran a drill bit and broke the drill bit through this via so I can make a patch wire. But also we've got some breaks down in here as well. You can actually see how corroded that is because there's a reference voltage here, which goes between here. But also there's a via right next to it, which runs over here. Well, it wasn't buzzing out anywhere over here. So I know we've got issues. Plus that resistor pack is eaten up so I'm gonna have to clean that up before it will even solder down again and yeah this is a, this is a mess this is a big mess so there's no way this thing was ever gonna work so a little bit at a time we take care of the problem Fair enough after I pulled the resistor pack and the op amp out and clean everything up it's it's a lot of breaks you can see the scratch right there in RP201 where I tried to See how much copper is left? There's none. There's a break in multiple spots in this. So like, there's a break between here and here. So this goes now around. So it's been broken between here and here. This one's broken right there. This one is broken between here to the via and the via down to here. It's broken, which goes over to this via. So yeah. There's a lot of breaks here, so this thing was never going to work. So we got to patch all of that up before we can even think about moving forward here. We got the same thing going on over here. Um, I pulled all these caps loose, 
And I got to fix this damage because there's that big blue bodge wire there. I think I'm just going to drop some super glue there. And just position the capacitor there and just kind of, I don't know, we'll figure that out. Alright, so I installed the voltage reference from the PowerBook 100 parts board because I don't trust the other one. Got the proprietary resistor pack all cleaned up and resoldered in. Put that back in. Got all of my traces patched and capacitors back in here. Took care of all of that. Took care of the ones back here. I took care of this one for now, but I've not touched this one, these at the moment, and they're very loose. You can just see it. It's screwed. I'm concerned about this because this is eaten up pretty good. There's probably some open traces there, but I'll have to double check. And... I haven't touched these yet. Okay, so we are somewhat put together for to a check to see if this works. So here's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna turn the power supply on. Okay, so we're not drawing excessive current. 5.2 volts, so there we go. The voltage regulator is running, so Will it chime? Let me turn the power on. No. Reset button works. It looks like the power manager just shut down. The NMI button's not responding. Reset button does. Okay, so, all right, um, now we have power to the board. Everything seems to be running, and you can kind of hear some noise coming from the sound. So it is running, but it's unable to boot because there's some issues going on over here in the data bus side. Uh, okay, so power management circuitry is okay. We don't know if the ROM's any good or not. We don't know if any of these other chips are any good. Start feeling them for. Whoa. I heard that. It's like floating lines. Yeah, I definitely heard that. Turn the power off, back on. Ooh, something's floating. Shouldn't do that unless something's floating. Yeah, buddy, there's something's floating in here. Okay, yeah, we're gonna have to take a closer look because something is floating. All right, before I fell into the rabbit hole of chasing everything over there, I decided to move over here where these three capacitors were and yeah everything was loose but more importantly they used this stupid solder mask stuff to hide actual breaks because we've definitely got some breaks in here like there's a trace that comes up and around there's a break right there that's one trace that's completely broken there's another one coming off this GPU graphics chip, which goes to this via, which is also broken, so I gotta fix that. Then, I think there's another via right here, and actually, if I grab my flashlight and shine it through the hole right there, you can kinda see where there's no copper left it's just gone yeah that's that's an issue it's completely gone so yeah we got a lot of patches we have to do up here as well of course yeah after breaking several huh, drill bits i went ahead and got all these vias drilled out i got all this crap patched up and because i had to do a via here do a two-way split there had to do a via there had to do one over here, drilled all the way through to the other side. And I put only the capacitor necessary for the speaker to work for right now. I still got to deal with this mess over there. But let's see. 
Does it finally work now? Well, let's find out. I hope. Oh my god, I got a chime. <laughs> it works. Holy crap. Alright, so I've got this monstrosity set up here. Got my test display hooked up. I got the rest of the patches and the capacitors and all that stuff installed. I got my blue scuzzy in. The portable does not provide termination power, so I'm powering it externally. My floppy emulator, everything is in a somewhat rudimentary position here. So let's turn the power on and we grab our little tool and nope, does not work. So I'm going to have to reset the PMGR. Sometimes you got to do that with these and try again. There we go. All right, so we're gonna go with the Snooper emergency disc. And hopefully it starts up. Now this screen has lines in it because, well, this was a junk screen to begin with. That's why I got it. But I, it works good for testing, so. All right, here we go. Hopefully it gives me a happy Mac. There we go. I didn't get the inverter with this display either. I just bought the panel because it was bad. I tried to take it apart and fix this line. Turns out the chip is bad and I created a new line by doing that. So anyways, I'm just going to leave well enough alone. It works good as a test screen. So we'll just leave it at that. All right. So this version of Snooper, which is the Snooper 2.0 emergency diskette does not work properly with testing the Ram on the Macintosh portable. So we're going to skip that. We're going to skip the parallel and modem port because you need a specialized adapter for those. And then now we're just going to do a test. Hopefully everything works. I left the SCSI test on because I've got the blue SCSI installed. So let's see. PRAM test passed. Which means the date and time is going to pass correctly too because that's in this chip over here. So we're good there. Testing the SCSI bus. It passed. And then we're going to test the CPU, which takes the longest time. I'm not sure exactly what the logic tests involve when it comes to testing the CPU, but it seems to be working fine. So that's awesome to know. So once this thing moves its way around here, I'm going to try to move over to the video tests here and hopefully we get that going good. So yeah, the, the swim circuit works, otherwise it wouldn't boot from the floppy drive and the SCSI works, otherwise we, we got an error. We can't test the RAM properly, not with this piece of software. Um, so we'll have to skip that for now. But if it wasn't working right, we wouldn't be able to boot this far into the system software. So. All right, did the CPU test pass? Yes, it did. Now let's test the uh, ADB. Yep, it passed. So everything's good. So we're going to go ahead and stop you. And let's see if we have any video tests here, if it'll let us do any. It looks like it will. Hmm. Let's try. Yeah. I don't know. This is just cool. Oh, that takes forever to draw. The Bressenham line algorithm. Not very fast on this CPU. working all right I think we can probably just wrap this up I want to go grab an external memory card because the problem is if I try to let's see let's reboot this 
If I try to boot from the blue SCSI, it's just going to say no because we don't have enough RAM. It's trying to actually boot from it now. Yeah. System 7.5 needs more memory to start up. So I need to go get some RAM and let's see if it'll boot from the blue SCSI. It should. All right. RAM card is installed. Let's get some power up here. All right. This is probably going to take eons to start up, but that's fine. We're going to give it a try here. Let's see, will it boot or will it not? I don't know. We're going to find out. It's going to take a long time to start System 7.5 on a Macintosh portable. I'm going to say that right now. Yeah, here we go. I'll be back once this thing starts up. That's one of those Mac FX cards, which is actually my design, and I licensed it to him to make them. And I think he finally stopped making those because he ran out of parts. I'm not sure. But Androda makes his version now, which is a much more reduced version with a single BGA, which uh, is certainly a lot easier to get than these older chips. Oh boy, looks like it's got to rebuild the desktop file. Every time you switch between System 6 and System 7, it's got to do that. I don't know why it does that and I think someone made a patch to stop that from happening because if you switch between those versions like if you've, you're dual booting you're going to have to do this every single time you dual boot fun 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 times but anyways it seems to be working fine at least now I'm not using the jumper wire so this is going to be capped at like 5 megabytes I think so, let's see, actually it started up off the Legacy Recovery, <laughs> that's funny, oh this is the network access disk software, never mind, okay yeah, total memory 5 megabytes, so we are working perfectly fine here, um, okay, so, all right, we are going to just go ahead and leave it at that, I think. So, that portable has been repaired. So, uh, off to the next one. God, I needed a lot of patches, but we're all good now. So, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and all that fun stuff. If you have a comment, please feel free to leave one. Until next time, guys, thank you for watching.